2017. May we have the roll call. Council members Agajanian. Present. Devine. Here. Slanian. Here. Mayor Garpedian. Mayor Pro Tem Najarian. Here. May we have your report. The agenda for the October 17, 2017 special public meeting of the City Council was posted on Friday, October 13, 2017 on the Bolton Board outside City Hall. Before you today is Director of Community Development and Public Works regarding potential downtown holiday trolley service. 1A is a resolution appropriating $143,293 of the undesignated general fund balance to Community Development Department's Urban Design and Mobility <coughs> Budget 43110-101-187. B is a resolution dispensing with competitive bidding and authorizing to execute a service agreement with PCAM LLC DBA Parking Company of America for a not to exceed amount of $92,994 for operation and maintenance. And C is a resolution dispensing with competitive bidding and authorizing to negotiate and execute a lease agreement with Creative Bus Sales. Mr. Ochoa. Yes, sir. This is something that emanated from this dais. Uh, council member Devine had, uh, as part of the GRIP program, um, went with other council members and staff to talk to some of the folks in the north end of Brand Boulevard in our downtown corridor. And one of the questions that was brought up is the viability of running a trolley service uh, during the holiday season. So with council direction, uh, we went and investigated further. And Mr. Lanzafame will walk you through a brief presentation that will further illuminate our findings. Thank you, Mr. Ochoa. Uh, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, members of the City Council, in July, uh, as part of uh, our transit summit, uh, this topic came up. Uh, the City Council asked us to investigate uh, to, to do a, hol a holiday trolley service by the holiday season 2017. Uh, so some of the actions we're asking today aren't maybe what we would normally do, uh, but we were moving pretty quickly. So let me walk you through what we found out and some of our recommendations uh, should you wish to go forward um, with the with the program. Uh, the purpose, uh, we want to improve mobility. Uh, as uh, Mr. Ochoa said, in some of our GRIT meetings, people uh, talked about uh, the need, the difficulty getting from the northern part of the downtown to the southern part, office in the north and more of the uh, recreation, food in the south. Um, and so a uh, temporary community shuttle service, separate and distinct from our, our own transit service. Um, we've listed some of the uh, benefits. Um, if it is unique enough and the experience is, is fun enough, uh, we'll attract additional visitors. Uh, uh, more importantly, we'll connect to different uses. Those employment centers in the north, parking facilities throughout the downtown, and then the major retail uh, in further in the south. Um, all going to promote our 18-hour city. Uh, and then uh, we do have service in the downtown. Uh, this would promote greater frequency for that. We have done trolleys before. We talked about them. In 2008, the city uh, engaged in a trolley service um, as part of the opening of the Americana at Brand. Uh, we ran that in May and June. The, the Americana opened May 2nd. We ran it for two months. Um, the ridership was uh, very low at 1.7. Um, that was uh, funded by the redevelopment agency. We had the ability at the time to do that, um, funded by the agency. And so after two months uh, with that ridership, uh, we elected to discontinue the service. The Caruso team, independent of the city, um, started uh, something, a, a trolley service in 2010. Um, they operated from May through September, October of 2010. Started out with, uh, with very good ridership, 26 passengers an hour. Uh, that increased to 31. Uh, and then September, October, it dropped off significantly to about 10 passengers an hour, at which point the Americana team uh, discontinued the service. They have looked at it um, over the years, most recently about a year ago, uh, but they have not decided to uh, to bring back the service. Excuse me. Can I ask? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Uh, so we do not have an experience during the Christmas time or holiday time to run a trolley. Do we have that experience? We, we haven't, in, and if we have, it would be before 96 when I came. So in, in the recent 
last two decades, well, because nothing those, during the holiday season. Yeah, those which you mentioned was during the year, like May correct. until September. So we do not have any experience That's correct. during the Christmas time. Correct. All right, thank you. So in, in envisioning the trolley service, um, we're trying to balance um, our objectives uh, with funding sources um, and this is a, a, a recommended trolley service if we're going to do, again, if we're going to do this. 20-minute headways, we would operate two buses, um, two trolleys, do it seven days a week, uh, 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and then on the weekend, 10 to 7, um, through that holiday season, just before Thanksgiving to just after, uh, just after the New Year. Um, the number of total service hours, that's just taking those days and, and the hours. Um, this will become relevant uh, as we start to look at cost and, and break that down. Um, you see down at the bottom um, the chart, uh, total service hours for each of those runs through the week and then the weekend. Uh, we have two options to run the trolley on routes. Uh, option A is brand, what we call brand focused. That would simply loop on Brand Boulevard. It would come around, pick up the Americana, uh, the Glendale Galleria, and then go back to Brand Boulevard. So you would have two buses, two shuttles operating on Brand Boulevard. Uh, they would make that, that loop. Option B, Central Brand, that would just be one continuous loop. So the two shuttles would just go up Brand, um, turn around, come down Central, pick up the Galleria, over on Colorado, back up Brand again. Um, of the two, we would recommend option A uh, so that you have, um, you're concentrating that. We think that if people are going to use the shuttle from the residents from uh, Central Avenue, the urban dwellers walking a block isn't going to be uh, a big deal. But this way we can concentrate all of our stops in, that, uh, in the brand corridor. In terms of ridership estimates, uh, I know, Mr. Njarian, you had asked us to come up with that. We don't have any experience, any, any recent experience with this. So we looked out to other um, agencies that would operate a, a similar trolley service. And as we'd said back in the summertime, the, the beach communities are where this is really operating. Um, we looked at um, Laguna Beach, Dana Point, uh, and San Juan Capistrano. Um, those were about the size that, that we're talking about. They operate during the summer months. It's free of charge, and they have headways similar to what we're looking at here, maybe a little bit less. Um, they are beach destination communities, um, but it, it was the closest we could find to us. They average about 12.7 riders an hour. Uh, total ridership, then, uh, we multiplied that over the number of hours, 1,200 hours that you saw before. 15,570 uh, 15, would be the estimated ridership if we were able to achieve that level. We also looked at the Glendale B Line. Glendale B Line operates two routes in the downtown. They average about 18 riders per hour on an annual basis. We looked specifically to November and January and found ridership actually dips during the holidays on our B Line maybe out of school or, or what have you. Um, but uh, it dips to about 10 riders per hour. So we use that as kind of a middle ground. Uh, that would be 12,260 riders uh, for the period that we're looking. We also used a conservative estimate, half of what the beach communities, again, we don't have any history to base this on, uh, so we tried to give a range. Um, 6.4 is merely half of the 12.7. 7,846 riders. So that's the best estimate we could give to you a range of riders uh, given different uh, indexes. Uh, we looked at uh, getting acquiring these trolleys. Uh, you can purchase them um, or for the pilot program we asked for a lease. Uh, these are the two numbers. They are for both trolleys. They're combined. Uh, uh, $328,000 buys you two of these vehicles. Uh, 18616 leases them for uh, a period of time, for that, that two or three month period 
that we're looking at. One of the difficulties that we found were the very few ADA compliant vehicles out there on short notice. Uh, we can certainly uh, go to a provider and, and ask for these vehicles. Certainly if we were going to buy them, we customize them. That's about an 18 month lead time. Uh, so we were looking for something existing. Uh, we were very fortunate that the company we are, are um, recommending uh, has two trolleys in Long Beach that can be used uh, here in Glendale. Uh, otherwise, we might have a little longer lead time in bringing them out from the East Coast. So what happened in Long Beach? Uh, I, I just Didn't think they're stored, there, or? they're stored there and they're, they're okay. inventory, not thing that they tried and it failed. Are these, what kind of engines do they have? I'm sorry, they, uh, they they're gasoline gas powered. Operating? Yeah, uh, and that's, again, we're, we want to make the distinction that we're operating this separate from our, our normal transit system. Um, if we were going to do this on a permanent basis, we'd probably want to look to CNG vehicles. Um, but again, availability uh, by November 18th, uh, this is what we could do. We went out to about eight different operators uh, that could operate these trolleys for us. Um, a very short turnaround time, um, and these are the two cost proposals we got. This would be the drivers, um, maintenance, and, and whatever service of the vehicles they need. Um, the uh, firm that we're recommending, Parking Company of America, has a facility, or at least they have some, uh, some storage capacity uh, here in the city of Glendale uh, near Adventist Hospital. Uh, they were the low-cost proposal. Uh, at 77495 we would recommend a contingency on that simply because we've never operated this before um, and we would like to be able to to have some cushion if we have an un unforeseen cost excuse me. excuse me can you go back sure. that 18000 is per month or for entire Two months or that's for months. two trolleys for the entire period the two and a half months that's our total cost oh. 18,000 okay. thank you this is the vehicle uh, that we were we were able to obtain uh, again if you wanted something that was open air it's more of a custom um, a custom uh, vehicle uh, that would take us some time to get but it does mimic the trolley um, wooden benches uh, distinctive color uh, in, in, uh, of the vehicle itself, and so it's something different than uh, the normal B-Line or Metro service that's operating in the downtown now. Our cost uh, all in, about $143,000. Uh, this is the breakdown. Uh, one thing, uh, we, our main costs are the lease of the vehicle and the operation. We have some other costs that we have, permit fees. We'll need these inspected by CHP. Uh, we'll have to make some signage for the routes. We'll want to do some marketing to make sure that people know uh, that we're out uh, with this project. Um, we're adding a contingency on the project itself. That would just be the trolley lease and uh, the, the other operational costs. We already have a contingency in the operational contract. So the total cost is 143000 Mr. Agajanian. Could you go back, please? You say trolley lease is eighteen thousand. Then Correct. maintenance is ninety-two thousand. What that's maintenance? maintenance and operations. So that's the drivers, uh, the service, and in maintaining the vehicles. Remember, we have we'll have more than two drivers uh, for twelve hundred hours. We wanted to break this down, uh, the cost, in a, a cost per ride. This will be the, the analytic that we use when we come back to you, uh, should you approve the program, uh, so that you can see how much is this costing us. Um, at the, at the uh, high end, if, if we really hit a home run and we're serving 12, uh, almost 13 passengers an hour, uh, $7.67, um, $7 that's on the base contract. Um, we've also added, if, with the contingency, $9.20. Um, if, we're, if we're not as successful and at the lower end, uh, it, that jumps to $15.22 a ride uh, or $18.26 with the contingency. 
That's a tough graphic. I wanted I mean, to give you all the information. I know transit transit operations are, are clearly uh, expensive in the red, uh, but at the high end, let's say our 12.7, we'd come out ahead if we went around and gave everyone a $5 bill who was waiting for a ride, and it'd be less than our budget. I cannot disagree with you. I think, but part of the idea as well, I think since we understood it from council, was the was this notion of having a feature, an amenity, an attraction I in know. the downtown. I'm just saying that's a tough. Sure. The, the fiscal side of me says. I, if I, I if I can, I just want to say that um, I, I agree with you that that's a little bit shocking. But when you look at the the total picture of uh, of the um, the cost, the project cost, and the benefit, I think, to our residents and on a trial basis. Uh, I think that kind of might soften the blow a bit. But is this more for the is this more for the residents or is it for employees who work in North Glendale? I mean I'm sorry, North Brand. I, I'd submit to you that it's a little bit of both. And to the extent that you do have lots of visitors in, in the downtown, so it's it's tourists, it's residents, and to the extent that, that folks may want to ride this, you'll see the pictures or have seen the pictures of the trolley. It is is uh, it's a little bit of an attraction in and of itself. It, it's uh, that's why we would we would feel comfortable bringing it to you in the context of a pilot project, because I think the numbers, as Mr. Og, as Mr. Najarian points out, kind of speak for themselves over a longer period of time. But as a novelty in the holiday season that still serves a stated need, it, it, it could you know, serve many masters without being too exorbitantly expensive. And, and, if, I can, and if I can add, um, uh, when I was on the, the GRIT visitations, of course, the businesses were telling me that they, they don't come down here for lunch. Uh, if they have celebrations or if they want to um, uh, have lunch, they go, they hop on the freeways and go somewhere else. They don't come downtown. I've also heard this is going to go all the way to Stalker, as I understand from Colorado to Stalker. There are a lot of apartment buildings up there where seniors live, and I've heard from them that they, they have a hard time getting down to um, the downtown, and so this uh, could benefit them as well. Um, during, especially during the holiday season when they may want to do shopping or they may want to come down just to see the Christmas lights at the Americana or a long brand uh, boulevard. Um, so it, it is serving, it would be serving uh, the entire population of our city, especially in that area. I, I think, uh, I'm sorry, if, uh, I, if I could just add um, yeah. one of the um, work employees, yes, that's where the impetus grit. Um, you remember uh, you had uh, somebody come here uh, on in in July and say, "I live up there, and I absolutely would bring my grandchildren." Um, I think the third area that we're, we we want to look at very closely um, is how many people are avoiding parking by using a shuttle to come down and either go to the Galleria or the Americana. My car is parked at work. I don't want to go down and look for a parking space. I'll take the shuttle. So well, that would be another going to metric. Our revenues. I'm sorry. This is going to impact our parking revenues. Well, we're 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 an hour and a half. We're an hour and a half free anyway. Uh, we'll fill sir, them. I Agagini. cannot support cost per ride for eighteen dollars and twenty six cents, and uh, for very limited benefit, which is people who live around, let's say North Brand. You're talking about we will benefit by people who will not bring their car downtown. But there is no room even around north of Glendale to park. It's very hard to park anywhere. So I don't see how we will benefit from parking somewhere else and ride on this bus and pay $18.26 per ride. However, if this is so important to do, I have two recommendations. First, to run the bus on Central and Brand, not just the Brand, so this way businesses on Central should benefit too. And the second thing would be to write something on the side of the bus, that what it is. But uh, I'm not happy paying $18.26. They can take 
taxi or Uber for $3 from north of <coughs> Brand to there. It will be only $3 or $4, and the, the, nobody will come to park. I mean, they're not going to bring their car, if that's the point, that we are tr trying to avoid people to drive to downtown Glendale and park their car, and at that time it's very hard to find any spaces. So they will take the Uber if we have enough parking north of Glendale. So they will stop there and they will take Uber for three, four dollars or Lyft. I mean, I don't want to advertise for Uber, but I would, that's my opinion. How, how close are you to the end of your presentation? Because I, I know that there's a lot of I, questions that are. Just last right. slide, some logistics. Um, shuttle stops, we would plan to stop to the extent we can using our own bus stops. North of Glen Oaks, that's not an issue. Um, in the downtown, uh, we would have to coordinate with other services, Beeline and MTA. And through the holiday, that gets a leaving a little bit more hectic. Um, we, would, uh, we will look for red zones near the bus stops where we could park there, or we may have to take parking, on-street parking, for the shuttle stop. Um, but that's something that we still need to work through. Um, storage, uh, I had mentioned that we should be able to store those locally. Uh, in, in a yard uh, close to Adventist. Uh, marketing and signage, that's going to be a big push for us. Social media, we'll really tax Tom, Tom Lorenz's team to help us get the word out. Um, we'll go to the building official management organization, BOMA, uh, the realtors, everybody that's involved with um, office management and make sure that they're aware. Uh, and then we will want to have some, uh, some solid analytics, number of riders, the cost, where they're coming from, where they're going to, so that we can bring that back um, and evaluate the program. Uh, that completes my presentation, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and again, the team is here. If you have any questions, I can't answer. Okay, so let's. Um, Ms. So Devine, you, want to Ms. Devine, you were ready. Do you well, have some I was questions? just going to say that uh, the, uh, another point I wanted to make is the fact that uh, you know we're talking about how many riders uh, or passengers we might have, and this this number that is um, uh, projected here could be to it, it's a conservative number, correct? So it, we could have a ridership that's that's more than that. And uh, come we, we don't think we would get more than 12 riders, 13 riders. Um, our Beeline service, although it's a different service, Beeline for the most part, Mr. Najari, and you had asked this question back in the summer, how much are we going to cannibalize? Most of our Beeline riders are taking it from the downtown to the transportation center. So they would not be candidates for the shuttle service. But we, we it would be great if we had more than 13 riders. But that would be about on par with our normal beeline service. Uh, and so we, we're not sure that we could actually double our service um, with this ridership. But we do. And, and I also think that we're, we're looking at the, the numbers uh, from the past. Um, and, you know, a lot has changed in the downtown since uh, 2000. And what were, what were these dates? 2010. 2008, and that's a very good point. Uh, so we have a lot more to offer in our downtown, and um, I, I just, uh, from from what I heard, um, we may see a, a big, you know, a lot of passengers on this trolley. But I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I can see that uh, it, it is an expense, um, but I think it's it's a pilot program, and I, I I just feel it's worth a try for the holidays. Mr. Sinan. Um do you know what the uh, per passenger cost is for us for Beeline? And then I'm going to ask Mr. Nigerian what, what it is on the average for the MTA. Two seventy. About two dollars and two dollars and seventy cents a rider. Wow. And so MTA, MTA, we we have about a all things all things yeah. in we have about a thirty percent fare box recovery rate. So uh, I would say it's about. It's it's two dollars probably at the very cheapest. We're we're it's a good point. Something that we look at yeah. um, when we're talking about do we draw any riders away? We don't think we'll draw any riders away. But something we want to be careful about is our fare box return is around sixteen percent. Our target is twenty. So we we 
we need to do some work on that as it is. Actually, let me be a little more clear. Probably MTA is closer to four, between four to five dollars uh, a ride per person. Yeah, not, the, not the two dollar fee. I forget ask, the two dollar. I asked the question not out of concern for sort of losing riders to our own bus line. I'm, I'm trying to, you know, find a reason for myself to approve a best case scenario 920 per ride kind of a scenario uh, by you know finding out what it costs us to do our 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 service and then MTAs and um, I mean ours is obviously far below the 920 that is the best case scenario uh, here so well I, I also want I also think this is a different ridership uh, than we're talking about uh, with the B line and the um, uh, metro, and you know, th with comparing those costs. This is this is uh, uh, people that live in up in the north side above um, Glen Oaks um, that that have to take more than one bus to get down to the gal the gallery or the Americana. It's difficult for them to get there. Um, the businesses, they don't have the time to get the B-Line, and they don't want to get on the B-Line. They want something that's a little bit uh, more, a, a little friendlier, you know, where you can meet people. And, I mean, different, it's a different kind of ridership that we're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I'm, I'm talking pure dollars and cents. Yeah, I mean, I'm not, yeah. I'm not comparing the type of individual, type of demographic that's going to ride one bus line or the other. I'm concerned about how much it is, how justified is it in, in fiscally to approve this. Um, and I don't want to be the Grinch. I mean, I, I want to be, I want to spread holiday cheer, but at what cost? Mr. Agujanian. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking at these figures, passengers per service. It's 6.4. Let's say if it's 6.4. It means in an hour, I mean, Let's assume there is one person in a car, because sometimes people, they ride together. So if it's 6.4 passenger per service per hour, it might be like four cars per hour. We're going to have four cars less coming downtown. That's all we will say. And we are paying $18.26, 25 cents, 26 cents to justify cost per ride. I mean, what we are saving, four cars, less cars will come toward downtown. How much that going to bring the difference? Now, what's the difference? Let them drive. But it's not, but it's not just, a, just a matter of who is not going to get in their car that is going to get on this bus. It's also a matter of who that otherwise wouldn't come downtown is going yeah. to come downtown because they have this uh, trolley available. So, so and trickle down effect. Yes. So a couple points I'd like to make. I know the B the B line runs to Stalker, both directions. So someone who wants to go from Stalker to the Galleria or to the Americana, it's a one seat ride. Correct. Um, the other point I want to make is, the, well, first, you know what? Let me just be honest. My head says no way on earth should I vote for this, but my heart. Uh, my heart says uh, that my colleague, Ms. Devine, um, has a pulse on the community that perhaps I don't always have or that, is, that, is, uh, that I'm blind to. So I want to support my colleague with this, with my heart. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say let's, you know, I would say let's go forward with this. I would suggest that a couple things to throw out. Number one, is there any advertising opportunity to defray the costs? Worry about, I mean, that's a complete discussion, but let's not just assume that no, that there's no advertising. The second is, I think the, I think the convenience is going to be a bi-directional service on brand. So although the, the attempt to pick up Central Avenue would create a wider swath, um, it would only give riders a one-way a north to south on brand. They'd have to, you know, have to wait for a, a circle to get back to where they, they wanted to go. 
My third point is that if we're going to market this, let's market it in conjunction with the B-Line. That, it, you know, you want to go downtown, you have two options. You know, ride our Holiday uh, Express uh, shuttle or the, our, our uh, Stallworth B-Line. Uh, that way we can maybe get some additional marketing for the B-Line. But that's where I'm at. I'm going to say let's support it. I hope the numbers, I hope I'm wrong with my numbers. And even if it's, even if my numbers are right, I hope that it adds something intangible that are outside the, uh, the spreadsheets here uh, that we're presented with uh, in terms of the numbers. So that's where I'm at, Ms. Devine. You got my heart. <laughs> My head says, hell no, but my heart says, let's try it. Um, it, it could be, f in best case, the, hack, the glass half full, it'll be fun. It'll get people involved in transit in many different forms. It'll develop some shopping along not just the Americana, but also along the mid-brand area, the restaurants and the shops, and will uh, benefit from some joint marketing uh, with the B-Line, and we'll be able to say this was a good deal. Mr. Najarian, uh, to, to help you calm your beating heart, um, I would say that, yes, you're correct from Stalker um, South, you can take one beeline. Um, we'll actually be going a little bit further north. So if there are elderly people that even can't get to Stalker for a beeline, the shuttle will go up that high. Oh, it's going to go um, to Mountain? It'll, all, it'll go up to Mountain is what we're looking okay, so at. a little around. longer. Okay. We also want to, we also will want to advertise that you could park at the Orange Street Garage, say, take the shuttle down, and then come back. It will stop at different parts throughout our downtown, so it won't merely be serving the gallery and the Americana, um, if, if those help you at all. You, you might want to run it through Central to get uh, people to Phoenicia. You know, there's a couple of good stops along the way on Central and the gallery as well. Just, just a thought. I, I'm not going to weigh in on, on the route. Just my thoughts are out there, and I'll let. I, I will. I'm sorry. Uh, Mr. Uh, Sinani and yeah. then Mr. Agajian. So as, uh, as you may have guessed from my comments, I'm very conflicted about this also because the sort of the cold numbers are uh, a little jarring, but I think my colleague put it well. Uh, I have an, an additional reason to support this because I think this may give a sort of a phantom taste of what's to come in Glendale, which is our uh, streetcar. This is a sort of a test run of, if, if we do the brand and central route, I think um, it'll may, it may instill in people the idea of, you know, maybe we can get around um, on, on public transportation. Um, and with the idea, of course, of rail, of, of it, you know, it's a cleaner source of transportation and, and more modern, ironically. Um, I think it's a good idea. I think it'll be good for the holidays. It'll give a certain spark to our holiday efforts. I don't think we do anything other than what DGA does with, uh, you know, sprucing up uh, brand, right? Uh, so this will be something we'll be you can doing. You put a wreath on there maybe? Exactly. And yeah, do some, you know, the colors are already obviously. Heart. <laughs> I'm reading your heart. <laughs> you are. So, I'm, I'm, you know, again, it's for a limited period of time. Um, and I'm really rooting for it. I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be a financially not, not a very bad investment. So I'm going to support it. Mr. Agajin. I cannot see how people who are living in Northwest will benefit from this or Adams Hills or other places. This is very limited. The benefit will be for very limited people, as you have mentioned here, 6.4 passengers per service per hour or service hour and we are paying I don't know how they those people or those businesses actually they're going to benefit this this is will be good for downtown businesses but I don't see the benefit to those who have businesses other places and those who are living other places except Brand Central and north of Grant. So I don't see it and I cannot support cost per ride of $18.26 where they can take, the, as I said before, Lyft and Uber for $3 or $4 and get and do the same thing that what we are trying to accomplish. But 
However, it's not that important to me one way or another. I'm not going to vote for it, but uh, it doesn't bother me if others they are voting for it. But $18.26 absolutely doesn't make sense. Okay, just, just to point out that 1826 is the worst case scenario. It could be, it be 920. I'm just saying. 920 is still is $3. I'm saying it, but it's not, it's not 18. Matter. It's not 1826. It's too much. We are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. That. And does not make sense. How, how about a bell? Are you going to have a bell, too? Put a bell on. Sure. I don't want to get into the details, Again, but I want reading. a bell. We'll get, we'll get Again. To Scott, Scott was like, sure, give Again, him a bell. Again, he's reading <laughs> my go. mind. Again, oh. this is getting okay, scary. Okay, sorry. Anything, this is anything scary. else, Ms. Um, Devine? This is getting I, scary. I've got one uh, thing. Uh, we are asking for resolution of appropriation, and then the authority for the manager to enter into two contracts. I do need some direction on the route. I have heard Brand, and I've heard Central, and I've heard I prefer not to, to run the show. Brand is Central. Yes. Okay. Yes. And, okay. And, 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 and I've talked to, to uh, uh, people, uh, including members of the chamber, and they feel that the circular route is would be the better of the two. Um, is there any way that, like, if we um, uh, eliminate some of the hours, would that decrease our, not that it would, decrease it by a lot, but like starting at 11 instead of 10, I mean, would that change the uh, I don't marginally? Know that, I don't know that yeah, it would they, They've got to okay. commit staffs out here. Okay. We can go back and ask the question, but um, these are the hours that, that we would recommend okay. for robust service. Okay. Well, well, I'm, I'm really happy um, about uh, my colleagues' support. Uh, I'm hoping that this this really works out as well. I think marketing is going to be the most important um, uh, uh, process here because we have to let people know uh, that it's out there and that we're doing this for the holidays. Um, so uh, uh, let's let's work really hard at this. We Great. Write on it and it um, actually, actually, I have had an offer from the chamber uh, to have a a some sort of a event on the, the first first ride. So maybe we can make that Does happen. the chamber want to contribute to? Yeah. I, oh, I didn't, I didn't ask them about that. the DGA. Well, I, that I think we've, uh, we've tried. We, we, uh, we can ask the question. Um, my, my thought is that if this is successful, then next year we can be looking at alternate funding sources, not only grants to operate it, but partners. Um, I don't know that they would, without a track record, um, want to jump on, but we will ask a question. Okay, Ms. Devine, do you have a motion? I'll move the item. A and Mr. Sinanian, second. second. Roll call, please. Council Member Zagajanian? No. Devine? Yes. Sinanian? Yes. Mayor Garpedian? Mayor Pro Tem Najarian? Yes. We have no other business on our calendar. I'll move for adjournment. Is there a second? I'll second. We are adjourned. And we do have closed sessions.